Welcome, Impactful Parents. Today, we're going to be talking about the importance of keeping girls away from hormone-altering chemicals during puberty. Hello, my name is Christina Campos. I'm founder of The Impactful Parent, and I help parents of school-age children who want to be one step ahead of their kids to turn their chaos into connection with their adolescent. I'm a mom of four, a teacher that's taught every grade from preschool through high school, and today I help moms and dads like yourself to navigate that exhausting, confusing, frustrating, but rewarding world of parenting. So welcome to The Impactful Parent. And today I have a special guest. Her name is Kimberly Grustas. And Kimberly started Good For You Girls, which is a company that keeps girls away from toxic chemicals during puberty. With over 15 years of natural product and nutrition industry experience, Kim had advanced knowledge on the dangers of even trace amounts of estrogenic chemicals during this delicate transformation from girlhood to adult. And you have to get to know this information, parents, so that you can keep all of your children, but specifically your girls today, um, away from these toxic chemicals. So we're going to learn all about it from Kim, and I'm really excited to get started. So thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. This is so exciting. I appreciate it. So we're going to dive in right away and just say, hey, why is it important for girls to stay away from these chemicals that you're talking about? So it's really interesting. My background is in nutrition. So I started this industry as a creative director, but working with ingestibles. So understanding how certain ingredients, protein powders, amino acids, all of that affect our body from an internal standpoint. Um, so when my daughters were born, they were both born with severe asthma and allergies. And uh, I couldn't have any fragrances. We would be running to the emergency room for breathing treatments, EpiPens, that sort of thing. So there, um, they had a lot of food allergies, a lot of skin issues. And for me, it was learning. What are their triggers? What is affecting them? And so through that process, I learned about the dangers of certain chemicals on the body. Um, we, we forget that our skin is our largest organ. So 65% of what we put on our body gets re absorbed right into the bloodstream. So why it's important, um, puberty is the second largest growth in a, a child's life um, other than infancy, right? It's a huge, it's a huge growth. And a lot of that growth and transformation is happening internally. We don't see it. So the way that I can explain it, the, the simplest way, is that when you eat a protein, right, your body knows what to do with it. Your, your body's an organic machine, right, an organic being. So you eat a protein, your body knows what to do with it. You eat a carbohydrate, your body knows what to do with it. You eat a fat, like all of these things, your body knows what to do with it. But now when you're introducing your body to a chemical, whether it's a synthetic fragrance, a dye, um, a, a paraben, which is a preservative. A lot of our skincare products contain a lot of ingredients uh, for pres preservation because they sit on a shelf for five years. So the body, the closest chemical compound that the body thinks that is, is estrogen. So we call them estrogenic chemicals because in the body, they actually mimic estrogen. And during the delicate cascade, Puberty actually starts in the brain. So it's the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and also the adrenals. So a girl's body is just sitting there waiting for little natural signals of estrogen to start that cascade into puberty. So what's happening is young girls today are entering puberty way too early because they're getting all these signals of these artificial signals that's, that's telling their body that it's time to start puberty. And we, we know now that if it's, if it's just that a girl's developing early or she has breasts and she's getting her menstrual cycle early, that's really not the issue. But we know that the earlier a girl enters puberty, the greater risk she's at for cancer and disease as an adult. Wow. So, yeah, we now know this. And in the 40s, the average age of puberty was um, was 14. Today, it's 11.2. Breast development used to happen at the same time of puberty and menstruation. 
it's happening almost two years earlier. And so what's happening is girls are developing, you know, the breasts are very sensitive to that, that estrogen. So the girls are developing and boys are not immune. Um, so what happens is around middle school. So I know you said girls, but it's, it's very crucial for girls, but boys are also getting these artificial estrogens. So you will see a lot of middle school boys with breast buds. And what happens is their natural, when their natural, te natural testosterone kicks in, it calms that estrogen. But you will see a lot of young boys experience that same um, flow of estrogen or bodies responding to that ex excess estrogen. Wow. That all of this is just mind blowing to me yeah. because I've heard about it. Like I did, I've heard we got all these horrible chemicals in our food and just in all the products I hear, you know, it's, and then, but we don't really understand how it affects us. And I also feel like we're kind of trapped. Like, like there's not, we, it, it's so everywhere that I don't even know how to identify it. Like, yeah, well, the problem, the problem too, is everybody said, oh, it's moderation, moderation. Oh, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But we, when we understand that, you know, for, we can control their food right? We can control their eating and we can keep them away from processed foods and all of that sort of thing. And that's really, and even in the body, when you're ingesting something, you also have your stomach acids that help break that down, right? But, you know, we can, it's almost like we can more control a lot of that by, by what they're eating, right? And in, during those tween years, I mean, they want to eat crap. Let's be honest, right? They, they're independent. They want to try new things. Life is crazy. You know, it's easier to give them something, right? Um, but they are getting all of these chemicals from from different areas. The thing with um, with girls when they're heading in through this transition is they're becoming aware of skincare. They want the body care. They need it. And as parents, I know that I said no. I mean, I controlled everything because it was crucial that I kept my daughters away from these chemicals. Um, but we can't, we don't have to say no. We just have to choose better, right? And and there's a psychology with girls. They they want in. You know, they're entering, they're seeing the world around them. They're seeing the older influencers. You're seeing the older girls. They really want to be part of it. And they are experiencing physical changes, right? They're starting to stink. Their oil production is starting. Sebum production starts at age nine. So, and what we don't want to do is we don't want to wait till there's a real issue, right? We want to sort of address the whys early enough. And that's why, you know, when I identified this in incredible gap in the category, I was like, wait a minute, you know, this is important. It's important for a girl to get the message that she matters, that we're not ignoring her stink or we're not ignoring her breakouts. And we're not ignoring the fact that she wants to take care of herself right but we just have to do it smart you know you know smarter and and choose products that are not going to harm them and not only not harm them but actually be beneficial to the skin um, at the same time but how do we identify those products since it seems like they're everywhere so I, we're i just as a parent who has no idea how to spot this what am i looking for I think that the easiest thing to spot is anything that has a dye, you'll see them. They'll all be labeled. They'll, the, the dyes will be labeled. The fragrance will be labeled. So remember, fragrance can house, you know, hundreds of chemicals in one fragrance. So we use a natural fragrance. So there is no synthetics because chemical fragrances are, are using synthetics. And those also, again, those are estrogenic. Um, so we want to stay away from anything that has a fragrance and not a natural fragrance. Um, we want to stay away from anything that has a, a paraben or um, ethyl, um, exyl, hec, um, polyethylene glycol, PEG. It'll, it'll be on a label, P-E-G. Um, we want to stay away from alcohol. Did I say alcohol already? So we there's certain ingredients. And I think it's also good for girls to understand and read the labels. Right. So this there's also this wonderful opportunity for parents. I, I, I use the funny analogy about your your first car. Right. When you save money to buy your first car, you take care of it. Right. Because it's yours. You worked hard. And girls are learning about their bodies 
And I think that it's once they learn how cool th this whole, you know, pu puberty and what their bodies are going through, I think they take better care of it and they take ownership of it. And I think the earlier you tell a girl, hey, this is yours, right? Again, that transition is mom tells you what to eat, what to wear, what's right, everything. And then it's this slow transition where they are feeling in control. And I love the opportunity for moms to really get in the weeds with their daughters and introduce the idea of hormones in a growth conversation, right? You're growing because of hormones. You're not sleeping as well as you used to. You don't want to go to bed at night. It's melatonin, you know, that's that's changing in their body. So you don't want to go to bed. At, you, you want to stay up later. Melatonin is a hormone. Right. So when we use the word hormones and things in in the conversation earlier, they're less afraid of it. And it's not just about their reproductive system, because I think kids think that that hormones are just about the reproductive system, but they're not. It's the blood. It's their bones. Um, it's their, you know, um, their brain, you know, everything that's changing in their in their bodies. But the, the biggest thing is read the labels, teach her how to read a label, be critical of labels yourself. Because women are, you know, we need to really reduce the amount of chemicals that we're exposed to at the same yes, time. We do. At the same yeah. time, yes. Yeah. And, and it's not a more example. is more. Yeah, it's not a more is more. And we are right now in, in social media and with TikTok and all of this, we are in a mass consumption phrase, uh, phase. And I, I know you'll see it. Mastige beauty is... It's going crazy right now. Everybody thinks they need a million products, but they they really don't. And it, it's so brands have really come down on pricing to hit this so that, oh, you can buy every every cent. Right. You don't have to just buy one cent. You can buy you have to buy every every cent. So I think there's also a wonderful opportunity to really talk because that's what's going on in her world too, right? Her friends have to have this, 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 this. So introducing critical thinking is huge, right? And that we have a choice that we choose. So what a fun opportunity to go through your, you know, medicine cabinet or your big box of stuff and say, you know what, at this, look at the chemicals on here. I don't want that on my body. Right. And so it's a, I, I just think it's an amazing opportunity because we are, as the moms, her first influencer. And they are watching everything you do, every move you make, and also how good you are to you. Right. It's so, you know, not do as I say, not as I do. That's one of the really cool things about this age with girls is that we don't have an opportunity or you know, they say you're a cool mom. Well, there's no such thing, right? Where you're, you're <laughs> it's, it's an oxymoron. You just can't be a cool mom. But what an awesome opportunity when she's just at that cusp of that self care to really teach her and do it as well. Because we are burnt out, stressed out, 100, per, you know, going 100 miles an hour. And so, what you're doing with your world she's going to do as well. She's going to, how you treat yourself, she's going to treat herself. And we know this, but we kind of forget it, right? And moms are always at the bottom of the barrel, right? We, we just, we're, we're, everybody else comes first. So it's a conscious thing to say, you know what? Now's the time that we're going to do this together, right? If you, yeah. have, if you have a daughter, let it really guide you and spend that, that special time together and learn together. Now, this is an amazing teachable moment, and we don't utilize it as enough as mothers or as parents in general, because dads could educate their daughters and their sons too. And so I'm glad we're bringing this up as that. Like, this is a teachable moment for both of us as a parent and a child on how we can be healthier. And we just have to seize the day really on that. Now, I do have a question for you. Are there any regulatory guidelines or restrictions in place to protect teenagers and children from exposure to harmful chemicals in our consumer products? No. So, no. no. So the, the um, European Union has a list of chemicals that they won't allow in products. And many times products that are made in the U.S. will have different 
you know, certain brands, big brands, will put one product in the U.S. and one product in the EU, and they'll ban the, those chemicals. So, no, it's really about education. And I am not one for giving somebody else the control over what to put in a product. I do like consumers to have that control right we can actually force more change and do more good with our dollar and the products that we choose to buy than for the fda to get involved there are certain products that they do regulate because um but they're they're not many but they were blinding there's certain dyes used in mascara um there's certain things that you know people were going blind over so that the fda did get involved but if you can imagine a world that's uh, that's changing so fast, right? There's we're constantly, even in the in the green natural space, always looking for new formulation, new ingredients, all of that, and that's a good thing. So if we had to, you know, go through the FDA or these regul you know regulatory bodies, um, it, it would take years for us to develop something really cool and new. And we, so it is all about, you know, trusted brands and, and looking for the ingredients. Um, there is new regulation coming down as far as fragrance goes, which I'm really excited about. It's the disclosure about what is in a fragrance. Because right now, like if you look at a, a supplement, you'll see a proprietary, sometimes the nutrition fact panel will have a proprietary list of ingredients. Well, that's their secret sauce and they don't have to disclose that. So fragrance is very much the same. So fragrance is a secret sauce that contains a lot of things. But again, if it's a synthetic, it's chemical. It's all chemical. Yeah. Now, are there specific skin conditions or health issues that can be exasperated by exposure to the toxic chemicals in specifically skincare products? Because this is obviously your wheelhouse with um, with your company. So, what do you what do you say to that? Yeah, is there there's eczema, dermatitis. There's a lot of ingredients that can actually cause those things. Um, we know that again, a lot of skin conditions are internal, right? So, so your skin actually mirrors what's going on internally. Um, so, so when we have a skin issue, we know it's not. It, it could be an autoimmune condition. It could be an allergy, right? But your skin, it'll show up on your skin. So. Um, Yes. So contact dermatitis, um, eczema, psoriasis, all of those sorts of things can be caused by chemical exposure. And it doesn't even have to be a lot. Right. So some people can react extremely, extremely quickly. Um, my my younger daughter, she had a hive disorder. Um, certain um, I could never put like she couldn't try on. It's the craziest thing. When we went shopping, she couldn't try on anything in the fitting room because you you know it's made in china or wherever you know it's made or it has and it's been soaked in chemicals right so these are fabrics that have chemicals within them and the second she would put it on covered in welts so her skin was so even so sensitive to that so she couldn't even try anything on in the fitting room um, i remember we had to try on the poor child she was five years old. Her dance costume, her dance costume had to try it on at the dance studio. And you can't wash, you can't wash a dance costume because it's all sparkly and right polyester, whatever. I mean, it was, it was insane. I mean, her whole back was just covered in, in welts. And so, yes, I mean, it's, it's really, an, and if we're aware of it, we can say, oh yeah, okay, right? So I think for me and my brand, I just want to be there for the moms who say, okay, I know she needs it. This is an important time. I don't want to leave her out because the worst thing you can do is leave your daughter out of the conversation. Um, and so it's, I, I think a lot of people understand that chemicals are bad, right? We all understand that chemicals are bad, but I don't think they understand especially during this transition, how important it, it truly is to stay away from the chemicals. And I also love the fact that little education now, then they're going to be more critical later, right? They're going to, they're going to learn to love um, the process of being the smartest of their friends, 
right? They're going to be, they're going to be the go-to like, oh no, I would never buy that because that's got all that. Look at all that. Gut. I don't want that. Right. Um, and then when they're buying the products and they're in their twenties, they're going to be more critical about what they put on their bodies. So this is a light, this education is lifelong for, for them. Definitely. Definitely. And as they get, especially for girls and they want to grow up and wear makeup for most of their lives, then this is so important. I mean, daily, daily, daily exposure just in makeup alone. Oh, oh yeah. And and what I, what also is, is crazy too, is, you know, in the next phase, they're going to start thinking about chemicals is when they want to be a mom. Oh yeah. Right. So that's the next, right. So, so you say all that time, Right. And we know, again, there's there's a whole big industry that is products just for pregnant women. Well, why is that? Right. That's because you care because, you know, right, mm -hmm. that you. have. So it's that, you know, those chemicals going through your body are going right. So it's so true that, um, you know, we really need just need to be smarter and that we do have the opportunity to control with with our budget and what we what we choose to buy now. Early, we want to say early, but give the audience an idea. What's early mean to you? Because this is a, definitely an important conversation and probably something we should be talking to our kids with earlier than we think. But what is early? Um, early, you know, when they're little, when they're five, six, seven, they're just little glow worms. You know, they bounce kind of off things, right? <laughs> they just bounce around. The first time when we really talk, when they're aware. So I know every parent marks the the door right i know i did with their height right and so when you start to see it's not constant when you see these big growth spurts right on that mark so you know every year it's like an inch and inch and then all of a sudden you see like four inches right you'll see those growth spurts um the other sign in that again talking about hormones again how it's a, what is a hormone it affects your blood and your bones and your brain um but when they start to show independence in the bathroom, when you are no longer bathing them and you, you want to give them their own time, that's the perfect time. And one of the other things I think is really uh, I love about um, this transition and with girls sp specifically, um, it's not a bar of soap. It's body wash. We are very specific about why we why it's body wash. Now, a bar of soap, you just rub over your body and you let it drain down your body, right? When you have a bar of soap. When you have a body wash, you need a face cloth, right? Or a scrunchie or some side of scrub, you know. So you're putting the body wash and this is, again, a teachable moment in the tub. We scrub from the top down and they're getting it under their armpits. They're getting their neck. They're getting, um, they're getting their breasts. Now we've got the lymphatic system engaged. And when girls' breasts develop, they stop touching them. They kind of steer clear of it. So before their breast development, and they're used to just scrubbing their pits, that's perfect. Because you have to move your adrenal glands. And this, again, is crucial for, for women, all adults, is we need to, it sloughs off the dead skin, right? Um, it moves the adrenal glands, and especially, too, in the pubic area, huge get that face cloth all soapy and soap up your body right put the you know step out of the stream of the shower and just scrub it because you want you really really want them again top down and that's the legs it's everything and so when they start showing independence in the bathroom it's fun to make it fun Right. Give them the tools that they need because and, and, and boys are crazy, too, because boys will just stand there under the water and think it's done. <laughs> yes. boys just, boys, you know, they, they'll jump in the pool in the summer and like, that's my shower. Right. So, you know, and girls will will are good to take that extra time. But when it just becomes second nature to them, it's done. It's done. Right. It's so and then and then moisturizing. We always follow up with moisturizer after. So, again, that's just those are just basic. And that's our company. We like to keep it simple. We don't have a million products. We have facial care. We have body care. We have deodorant. So we like to keep it simple. We don't want to overwhelm them because kids do not need a million products. Right. They need the basics. They need the good basics. And so they can walk away going, you know, I feel pretty good. Right. And our our products are naturally scented. So when you use the body wash and you use the lotion after, you sort of get a nice 
uh, not an overwhelming scent, but you just, it makes you feel good. And right before bed, it's a great, it's a great thing. Let's talk a little bit about Good For You Girls because this is your product line. And how do you differentiate your skincare line from traditional makeup brands in terms of protecting teenagers from these toxic chemicals? Yeah. Um, so again, the whole reason I started the company was because of my daughters and there was a complete void in the industry. Um, I was shocked. Honestly, it was baby products and adult products. And it was the beginning of naturals. I mean, there were beautiful baby products out there. There were beautiful adult products out there, but nothing for this transition. So the concept around my brand is it's that it's her skincare, that there is pride in ownership. And it's very much a gift. It's a recognition of this transaction, of this right of uh, this transition, this rite of passage, as you will. Right. And they will covet it and and take better care of themselves. It's it's super hard for us to compete, um, you know, with mass market, huge big companies, Procter & Gamble, Unilever, whatever. So we don't even try. Honestly, um, I, you know, raise hold my we're here for your daughter flag up as high as I can. Mm -hmm. um, but we we protect our, you know, our chemicals. We're fully transparent. Oh, that's another thing, too. You had asked earlier, how do we tell? If there are no ingredients on a product on the website, list on the website, don't even consider it. Don't even put it in your cart, right? It should have, and it shouldn't just be bulleted. It should have It should have the full, what we call the inky nomenclature. So it should have a full, let me see it, a full list of ingredients. It should be listed out, um, all the products you purchase. And, it, and if it, it doesn't have that, don't even consider it because they're hiding something, right? Um, so for us, um, it's about, you know, keeping it simple. Um, we have cleanse, tone, and moisturize for your face, body wash, body lotion, and deodorant. And we also have the toner pads for on the go kind of stuff, or it just makes it easier. So we, we just like to keep it simple, but it, it also, um, you, you asked about, you know, what, what differentiates us is it really for moms? Like our communication, we don't communicate with the girls. We are not about, you will not, we don't do young influencers. We don't want, we don't believe that any brand should be in a child's bathroom. That's, that's my, that's my line. I, I don't do that. Um, we love our moms. We love our grandmas. We love our dads <laughs> that, you know, so you got to go through the parent to get to the kid. I, I, as a mom, I wouldn't want any brand to go directly to my kid either. Right. So, and I know there, there's a lot of brands out there that, um, are popular and they, they just do not have the morals and ethics to, to not go after that young demographic, but, um, it's mom's. You know, I, I care about that communication because they're the ones who are trusting me with their child. And so that's super important to me, you know, having that, having those two consumers. Because, again, you know, it, it, then we make mom look good, right? Mom gets it, gives it to her daughter, and the daughter's like, thanks, mom. You know, so it's it's a win-win for, for both mom and mom and us. What advice would you give to parents or teenagers also, for that matter, who are independent, who listen to this episode and say, yeah, I want to prioritize non-toxic skincare choices and just like non-toxic lifestyle in general. Where mm -hmm. do we begin? Like what, what's, cause it's so overwhelming cause it's everywhere. Where would you suggest that we just get started? If you want to use Amazon as like Google, right? You want to find it on Amazon, then go to the web, go to the company's website right? Go to the company's website and, and validate them. And you'd be surprised how many products that you search on Amazon or in the beauty business that are actually made in China. And you think that it's a US, right? But it says right in the label and you can see exactly where it's made. Um, and you know that there's no regulation there, right? That, and we don't know how many years ago that that product was manufactured, right? So, um, and again, even on TikTok, there's a lot of stuff you know, happening and all these beauty products, every whatever. Um, so it's just critical thinking. Less is more. Start small. Add one. Add two. Add, right. And just sort of create your something that you can be proud of. Right. And again, it's it, it goes against the mass consumption. But I honestly think that that's where we're headed. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. Such an important topic. And I hear that you even have a freebie for our audience. Can you tell us what that is? What, what would they be getting if they go and watch uh, this? At, go, go to the episode, they finish watching it. Now they get their freebie. What is it going to be? So I made a cheat sheet for you and it has the chemicals to watch out for, for everybody. And then I also listed some chemicals specifically for girls. So it's just a one sheeter. If you're, you know, asking about what chemicals, I give you sort of the basics. And I hear that that's not even all. You actually have a second benefit for us and the audience today. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, use uh, code impactful P twenty for twenty for twenty uh, percent off your first purchase. The other thing too is there's a wonderful resource which I should have put it on there, but it's called EWG Environmental Working Group. And they are really the granddaddy of organizations that um, will, you know, give you the skinny on chemicals in plastics and things like that. So Environmental Working Group, I love as a resource. Understand there's a lot of other um, companies that will say that um, you go to their registries or there's apps online where you can say, was this product listed? I want your your um, followers to understand that those are paid. So I, as a brand, yeah, that's not out of the goodness of their heart that they have these. So yeah. I, as a brand, have to pay thousands of dollars to be listed on those apps, right? So it's not, but the Environmental Working Group um, is um, a very generous organization. They do not, you do not have to pay to be listed as a brand there. They simply will only list um, people who qualify. Um, that they feel uh, manufacture good products. That is such a great way to start. That there's our teachable moment. This is where we we learn ourselves. We use this free PDF to to go and then educate our kids. And before you know it, hopefully we're all living healthier. Well, I um, I love the fact that you know even as moms, we still don't even understand how our bodies. Right? We like to think we get it all and we understand how it all works. Um, but it's amazing. And I'm, I'm truly a huge fan of puberty. I think puberty is a superpower. I think when girls understand what their bodies are going through and love it and embrace it, and we have a really positive conversation a, around it, it's not so scary. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be scary. And I think we do have a lot of girls who struggle during this time. And I know that you ask any woman when, you know, when was her first awareness of her body? I mean, she'll tell you it's puberty right? And her trauma, I mean, pu puberty trauma is a thing with girls, right? It's scary. And so at the same time, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be when you teach them how amazing their body is, and what they're going, what they're dealing with. And oh my gosh, it's incredible. Um, I think they just it's, it's less scary. And that's our job, right? We want to give them the confidence, we want to keep things as positive and happy as possible for them. Absolutely. Now, people are listening to this and they're resonating with everything that you're saying and trying to go chemical free. Where can they find you and Good For You Girls? Um, come to the website, goodforyougirls.com. It's all spelled out. Um, we are sold on Amazon and it is only by us. So there, we don't allow anyone else to sell our products on Amazon. Um, and it's also available at walmart.com. So those three those three platforms. But, oh, that's um, great. Yeah. Yeah. So if they come, come to the website, um, we don't do a whole lot of bombarding with emails and all that stuff. We don't use text messages and all that. Again, my, my mom's time is important. I don't bombard them and that kind of stuff. Um, but we'd love to see them. And again, I, if they go info at good for you girls, all of those come right to me. So I'm happy if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer any of those. This is a wonderful resource for our parents. Just what are your last words, your last thoughts? If you want to say one last thing to parents and say, hey, this is so important. Listen to this. Your kids are getting too many chemicals in their body. What would you say? What do you want? What are your last thoughts for tonight? When they're lashing out and they're emotional and they're pushing you away, that's the time to hug them tighter because they need to feel safe. They don't want to push you away. That's a true test. And we, we know that, right? So use that as a sign, an opportunity to say, okay, I'm not going anywhere. 
I'm right here. And just hug them a little bit closer because that time is so fleeting. And um, I, I envy any parent who's going through that right now. I just, I love that. I love that time. It's so special. Thank you so much for being here, Kim. I really appreciate all this valuable information that you're giving our audience.